Hello and welcome. I am Joe Bartlett, and this is the Blue Creek Outdoors Bible Study. Welcome back to another week of the Blue Creek Outdoors Bible Study, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. Today we are going to be reading some Psalms and some in First Chronicles. Just just f- uh, four chapters in First Chronicles. We'll be reading First Chronicles 13 through 16. Uh, we're actually going to start off with Psalms 106 and 107 before we get into First Chronicles. And then uh, we're going to read Psalms 1 and 2, 15, 23 through 24, 47, 68, 89, 96, 100, and 101, 105, and 132 today. Um, We are still in the story of David, kind of going back and forth between the story of Israel with David as king now, and then back and forth between some songs that David wrote and some other psalms that were written by other people during the same time period. So uh, we are going to get right after it with Psalms 106 and 107. Psalm 106. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare his praise? Blessed are they who maintain justice, who constantly do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, when you show me favor, to, when you show favor to your people. Come to my aid when you save them, that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may share in the joy of your nation, and join your inheritance in giving praise. We have sinned even as our fathers did. We have done wrong and acted wickedly. When our fathers were in Egypt, they gave no thought to your miracles. They did not remember your many kindnesses, and they rebelled by the sea, the Red Sea. Yet he saved them for his name's sake, to make his mighty power known. He rebuked the Red Sea, and it dried up. He led them through the depths as through a desert. He saved them from the hand of the foe. From the hand of the enemy he redeemed them. The waters covered their adversaries, not one of them survived. Then they believed his promises and sang his praises. But they soon forgot what he had done and did not wait for his counsel. In the desert they gave in to their craving. In the wasteland they put God to the test. So he gave them what they asked for, but sent a wasting disease upon them. In the camp they grew envious of Moses and of Aaron, who was consecrated before the Lord. The earth opened up and swallowed Dathan. It buried the company of Abram. Fire blazed among their followers, and a flame consumed the wicked. At Horeb they made a calf and worshipped an idol cast from metal. They exchanged their glory for an image of a bull which eats the grass. They forgot the God who saved them, who had done great things in Egypt, miracles in the land of Ham, and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. So he said he would destroy them, had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to keep his wrath from destroying them. Then they despised the pleasant land. They did not believe his promise. They grumbled in their tents, and they did not obey the Lord. So he swore to them with uplifted hand that he would make them fall in the desert, make their descendants fall among the nations, and scatter them throughout the lands. They yoked themselves to the Baal of Peor, and ate sacrifices offered to lifeless gods. They provoked the Lord to anger by their wicked deeds, and a plague broke broke out among them. But Phinehas stood up and intervened, and the plague was checked. This was credited to him as righteousness for endless generations to come. By the waters of Meribah they angered the Lord, and trouble came to Moses because of them. For they rebelled against the Spirit of God, and rash words came from Moses' lips. They did not destroy the peoples as the Lord had commanded them, but they mingled with the nations and adopted their customs. They worshipped their idols, which became a snare to them. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan. And the land was desecrated by their blood. They defiled themselves by what they did. By their deeds they prostituted themselves. Therefore the Lord was angry with his people and abhorred his inheritance. He handed them over to the nations, and their foes ruled over them. Their enemies oppressed them and subjected them to their power. Many times he delivered them, but they were bent on rebellion, and they wasted away in their sin. But he took note of their distress when he heard their cry. For their sake he remembered his covenant, and out of great love he relented. He caused them to be pitied by all who held them captive. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from the nations that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Psalm 107 Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this, Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north to south. Some wandered in the desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. 
He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men, for he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness and the deepest gloom, prisoners suffering in iron chains, for they had rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. So he subjected them to bitter labor. They stumbled and there was no one to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and of the deepest gloom, and broke away their chains. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men, for he breaks down gates of bronze and cuts through bars of iron. Some became fools through their rebellious ways and suffered affliction because of their iniquities. They loathed all food and drew near the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Let them sacrifice thank offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. Others went out on the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord for his wonderful deeds in the deep. For he spoke and stirred up a tempest that lifted high the waves. They mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. In their peril, their courage melted away. They reeled and staggered like drunken men. They were at their wit's end. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. They were glad when it grew calm, and he guided them to their desired heaven. Desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Let them exalt him in the assembly of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. He turned rivers into desert, flowing springs into thirsty ground, and fruitful land into salt water because of the wickedness of those who lived there. He turned the desert into pools of water and parched ground into flowing springs. There he brought the hungry to live, and they founded a city where they could settle. They sowed fields and planted vineyards that yielded a fruitful harvest. He blessed them, and their numbers greatly increased. He did not let their herds diminish. Then their numbers decreased, and they were humbled by oppression, calamity, and sorrow. He who pours contempt on nobles made them wander in a trackless waste. But he lifted the needy out of their affliction and increased their families like flocks. The upright see and rejoice, but all the wicked shut their mouths. Whoever is wise, let him heed these things and consider the great love of the Lord. In these two psalms, we see kind of a a little bit of a lament, but also a praise in the fact that it recounts the unfaithfulness that Israel has displayed against God um, over the course of their history. And it also recounts the amount of times God has forgiven them and loved them. It, it talks again about what Moses did for them and how that once in the promised land, they again were set against following God. They sacrificed their children to false gods, demons, and idols. Um, so God allowed them to be oppressed by their enemies until they cried out to him again. Um, and then he saved them again, continuing to keep the covenants he has made with them, even when they do not. Um, That's kind of been the theme throughout most of the Old Testament, that God keeps his promises and covenants with Israel even when they do not keep their end of the bargain. So uh, we're going to hop back into 1 Chronicles now uh, and be in a little bit more of a narrative story time, which I enjoy. 1 Chronicles 13. David conferred with each of his officers, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds. He then said to the whole assembly of Israel, If it seems good to you, and if it is the will of the Lord our God, Let us send word far and wide to the rest of our brothers throughout the territories of Israel and also to the priests and the Levites who are with them in their towns and pasture lands to come and join us. Let us bring the ark of our God back to us, for we did not inquire of it during the reign of Saul. The whole assembly agreed to do this because it seemed right to do all the people. So David assembled all the Israelites from the Shiloh River, or from the Shihor River in Egypt to Lebohamoth to bring the ark of God from kiriath Jerim. David and all the Israelites went with him to Bala of Judah, kiriath Jerim, to bring it up from there, to bring up from there the ark of the God the Lord, who is enthroned between the cherubim, the ark that is called by the name. They moved the ark of God from Abinadab's house on a new cart, with Uzzah and Ahio guiding it. David and all the Israelites were celebrating with all the might before God, with all their might before God, with songs and harps, lyres, tambourines, cymbals, and trumpets. When they came to the thre- threshing floor of Kidon, Uzzah reached out his hand to steady the ark because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah, and he struck him down because he had put his hand on the ark, and so he died there before God. Then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzzah, and to this day that place is called Perez Uzzah. David was afraid of God that day and asked, How can I ever bring the ark of God to me? 
he did not take the ark to, with him to the, into the city of David. Instead, he took it aside to the house of o, uh, Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house for three months, and the Lord blessed his household and everything he had. Chapter 14 Now Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David, along with cedar logs, stonemasons, and carpenters, to build a palace for him. And David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel, and that his kingdom had been highly exalted for the sake of his people Israel. In Jerusalem, David took more wives and became the father of more sons and daughters. These are the names of the children born to him there. Shemua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibhar, Elishua, El Elpilet, Noga, Nepheg, Jephiah, Elishema, Beladia, and Eliphalet. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointing king over all Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. But David heard about it and went out to meet them. Now the Philistines had come and raided the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of God, Shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? The Lord answered him, Go, I will hand them over to you. So David and his men went up to Baal Perazim, where he defeated them. He said, As waters break out, God has broken out against my enemies by my hand. So that place was called Baal Perazim. The Philistines had abandoned their gods there, and David gave orders to burn them in the fire. Once more the Philistines raided the valley, so David inquired of God again, and God answered him, do not, go, do not go straight up, but circle around them and tack them in front of the balsam trees. As soon as you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the balsam trees, move out to battle, because that will mean God has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistine army. So David did as God commanded him, and they struck down the Philistine army, all the way from Gibeon to Gezer. So David's fame spread throughout every land, and the Lord, him, Lord made all the nations fear him. Chapter 15 After David had constructed buildings for himself in the city of David, he prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched a tent for it. Then David said, No one but the Levites may carry the ark of God, because the Lord chose them to carry the ark of the Lord and to minister before him forever. David assembled all Israel and Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord to the place he had prepared for it. He called together the descendants of Aaron and the Levites. From the descendants of Kohath, Uriel, the leader, and 120 relatives. From the descendants of Merari, Asaiah, the leader, and 220 relatives. From the descendants of Gershon, Joel, the leader, and 130 relatives. From the descendants of Elizaphan, Shemaiah, the leader, and 200 relatives. From the descendants of Hebron, El Elil, the leader, and 80 relatives. And from the descendants of Uziel, Aminadab, the leader, and 112 relatives. Then David summoned Zodak and Abiathar the priests and Uriel, Asiah, Joel, Shemaiah, Elil, and Aminadab, Aminadab the Levites. He said to them, You are the heads of the Levitical families. You and your Levite, fellow Levites are to consecrate yourselves and build the, up the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel, to the place I have prepared for it. It was because you, the Levites, did not bring it up the first time that our Lord God broke out in anger against us. We did not inquire of him about how to do it in the prescribed way. So the priests and the Levites consecrated themselves in order to bring up the Ark of the Lord, the God of Israel. And the Levites carried the Ark of God with the poles on their shoulders as Moses had commanded in accordance with the word of the Lord. David told the leaders of the Levites to appoint their brothers as singers to sing joyful songs accompanied by music instruments, musical instruments, lyres, harps, and cymbals. So the Levites appointed Heman, uh, son of Joel, from his brothers, Asaph, son of Barak Barakiah, and from their brothers, the Merarites, Ethan, son of Cushahiah, with them the brothers next in rank, Zechariah, Jaziel, Shemariah, Jehiel, Unye, Eliab, Beniah, Masiah, Mathathiah, Eliaphulu, Mekniah, Obed-Edom, and Jehiel, the gatekeepers. The musicians, Heman, Asaph, and Ethan, were to sound the bronze cymbals, Zechariah, Eziel, Shemirmoth, Jehiel, Uni, Eliab, Masiah, and Benaniah were to play the lyres according to Alamoth, and Mattathiah, Eliphilu, Machniah, Obed-Edom, Obed Jael, and Azaziah were to play the harps, directing, accor directing according to Shenanith. Kenaniah, the head Levite, was in charge of the singing. That was his responsibility because he was skillful at it. Barakiah and Elkanah were to be doorkeepers for the ark. Shebaniah, Josephat, Nathanael, Emesai, Zechariah, Benaniah, and Eleazar, the priests, were to blow trumpets before the ark of God. Obed-Edom and Jehiah were also to be doorkeepers for the ark. So David and the elders of Israel and the commanders of units of a thousand were to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord from the house of Obed-Edom with rejoicing, because God had helped the Levites who were carrying the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Seven bulls and seven rams were sacrificed, and now David was clothed in a robe of fly, fine linen, as were all the Levites who were carrying the ark, and as were the singers and Kenaniah who was in charge of the singing of the choirs. 
David also wore a linen ephod. So all Israel brought up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord with shouts, with the sounding of ram's horns and trumpets and of cymbals and the playing of the lyres and harps. As the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michael, daughter, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David dancing and celebrating, she despised him in her heart. Chapter 16 They brought the Ark of God and set it inside the tent that David had pitched for it, and they presented burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before God. After David had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each Israelite man and woman. He appointed some of the Levites to minister before the Ark of the Lord, to make petition, to give thanks, and to praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Asaph was the chief, Zechariah second, then Jael, Shemaramoth, uh, Jehiel, Mattathiah, Eliab, Benaiah, Obed-Edom, and Jael. They were to play the lyres and harps, Asaph was to sound the cymbals, and Benaniah was and Jehaziel, the priests, were to blow the trumpets regularly before the Ark of the Covenant of God. That day David first committed to Asaph and his associates this psalm of thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, and tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his, glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in his strength, seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. O descendants of Israel, his servant, O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth, he remembers his covenant forever. The word he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you I will give the land of Canaan as the portion you will inherit. When they were but few in number, few indeed, and strangers in it, they wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another. He allowed no man to oppress them. For, they, for their sake he rebuked kings. Do not touch my anointed ones, do, not, do my prophets no harm. Sing to the Lord all the earth, proclaim his salvation day after day, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him, strength and joy in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him, worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth, the world is firmly established, it cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea resound in all that is in it, let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Then the trees of the forest will sing, they will sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love endures forever. Cry out, save us, O God our Savior, get, Savior. gather us and deliver us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name, that we may glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen, and praised the Lord. David left Asaph and his associates before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to minister there regularly, according to each day's requirements. He also left Obed-Edom and his sixty-eight associates to minister with them. Obed-Edom, son of Jeduthun, and also Hosea, were gatekeepers. David left Zadok, the priest, and his fellow priests before the tabernacle of the Lord at the high place in Gibeon to present burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of burnt offerings regularly, morning and evening, in accordance with everything written in the law of the Lord, which he had given Israel. With, with, him, or with them were Heman and Judithan, and the rest of those chosen and designated by name to give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Himan and Judithan were responsible for the sounding of the trumpets and cymbals and for the playing of the other instruments for sacred song. The sons of Judithan were stationed at the gate. Then all the people left, each for his own home, and David returned home to bless his family. So in these chapters and chronicles, we see that David is moving the Ark of the Covenant to the new capital of Israel, Jerusalem. Now, quick quick backtrack. Remember the the... Israelites carried the Ark of the Covenant through the desert, took it into the Promised Land. The Philistines took it once, and the plagues took them over so bad that they sent it back. Um, and Saul did not take care of the Ark of the Covenant. Remember, it is the it is the earthly throne of God, and and David knows this. So uh, David goes to get it, um, and they're all very excited to have the Ark and bring it back to Jerusalem. But they don't quite pay heed to the rules of the Ark um, that were set forth by Moses. 
um, to Israel. Remember, it's only to be moved by Levites only, and it has to be moved on poles. Well, they put it on a cart, and they are not Levites. So while they have it on the cart, it starts to fall. Uh, Huza touches the ark, trying to catch it, I presume, because the, the, a cow tripped, the cart gets unsteady. Well, Huza touches it, and it God strikes him dead immediately. Um, David is upset, mad, and fearful of God that day. Uh, remember that in Numbers 4, God said that touching the ark is means death. Um, that is the punishment for touching the ark. Now, the hard part about this is, in my mind, what this re- represents is the stark contrast between God and ourselves. God is blameless, holy, literally unblemished, and when in the presence of us as human beings, which is the point of the ark, that contrast, uh, that that vast contrast, touching the ark is a transgression that is... That is uh, um, I'm, death is the only answer for it. It is an inexcusable act from our physical body to touch the Ark of the Covenant. So that is an immediate death sentence. Um, I would presume to think that uh, that doesn't mean you're going to hell or anything like that. That doesn't judge your soul, but it definitely does judge your body. Um, I, you know, quite obviously, these people believed in God and were walking with Him as best as they could. So I don't think that that was a, a damnation of of His soul, but it definitely killed his body because that act of touching the Ark of the Covenant is uh, something that is not not able to be tolerated by God. But anyways, so David then knows that they can't move it. So he leaves the house, leaves the Ark at the home of Obed-Edema and then, uh, and then does, goes back home. The, Isra- the Philistines attack him a couple times. God hands them over to David. And it also says that God caused the nations around Israel to fear David. Um, they know that God is with David. They know David has his eyes on God. So he's basically unbeatable as long as he keeps that up. But then David's ready to finish bringing the ark into Jerusalem. He has the Levites go and move it with poles, bring it into town. And as they're coming into town with it, it very quickly told us that his wife, wife McCall, uh, looked on him with disdain. She was disgusted with him. We'll come back to her later. So put a pin in that one. But um, David establishes the tent of meeting and has the Levites all working on their assignments according to the law, setting the 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 Israelites back on kind of the right course as far as the Ark of the Covenant and the Tent of Meeting. So we will move on to Psalms 1 and 2, 15, 22 through 24, 47 and 68. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. On his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever does he does prospers, not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Psalm 2 Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Let us break their chains, they say, and throw off their fetters. The one enthroned in heaven laughs, the Lord scoffs at them, and then he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord, he said to me. You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will rule them with an iron scepter. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and you be destroyed in your way. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Psalm 15 Lord, who may dwell in your sanctuary? Who may live on your holy hill? He whose walk is blameless and he who does what is righteous and he who speaks truth from his heart and has no slander on his tongue. Who does his neighbor who does his neighbor no wrong and who casts no slur on his fellow man who despises a vile man but honors those who fear the Lord who keeps his oath even when it hurts who lends his money without usury and who does not accept a bribe against the innocent he who does these things will never be shaken Psalm 22 a psalm of David My God my God why have you forsaken me why are you so far from saving me so far from the words of my groaning 
Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, and am not silent. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. In you our fathers put their trust. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried to you, and were saved. In you they trusted, and were not disappointed. But I am a worm, and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb, and you made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast upon you, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help me. Many bulls surround me, strong bulls of Bashan encircle me, roaring lions, tearing their prey, open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax, and it has melted away within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. But you, O Lord, be not far off. O my strength, come quickly to help me. Deliver my, my, my life from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my brothers. In the congregation I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him and all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or disdained the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but he has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. They, they who seek the Lord will praise him. May our hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive, posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, for he has done it. Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters, where he restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness, for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 24, a Psalm of David. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. He will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O you gates, be lifted up, be your, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. How awesome is the Lord Most High, the great King over all the earth. He subdued nations under us, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. God has ascended amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid the sounding of trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing to him psalm of praise. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. The nobles of the nations assemble as the people of the God of Abraham, for the kings of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Psalm 68, a Psalm of David. May God arise, may his enemies be scattered, may his foes flee before him. As a smoke is blown away by the wind, may you blow them away as wax melts before the fire. May the wicked perish before God. May the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. Sing to God, sing praise to his name, extol him who rides on the clouds. His name is the Lord, and rejoice before him. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. 
God set the lonely in, sets the lonely in families. He leads forth the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. When you went out before your people, O God, when you marched through the wasteland, the earth shook. The heavens poured down rain before God, the one of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel. You gave abundant showers, O God. You refreshed your weary inheritance. Your people settled in it. And from your bounty, O God, you provided for the poor. The Lord announced the word, and great was the company of those who proclaimed it. Kings and armies flee in haste. In the camps, men divide the plunder. Even while you sleep among the campfires, the wings of my dove are sheathed with silver, its feathers with shining gold. When the Almighty scattered, scattered the kings in the land, it was like snow fallen on Zalman. The mountains of Bashan are majestic mountains. Rugged are the mountains of Bashan. Why gaze in envy, O rugged mountains, at the mountain where God chooses to reign, where the Lord himself will dwell forever? The chariots of God are tens of thousands and thousands of thousands. The Lord has come from Sinai into his sanctuary. When you ascended on high, you led captives in your train. You received gifts from men, even from the rebellious, that you, O, o Lord God, might dwell there. Praise be to the Lord, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. Our God is a God who saves. From the sovereign Lord comes escape from death. Surely God will crush the heads of his enemies, the hairy crowns of those who go on in their sins. The Lord says, I will bring them from Bashan. I will bring them from the depths of the sea, that you may plunge your feet in the blood of your foes while the tongues of your dogs have their share. Your procession has come into view, O God, the procession of my God and King into the sanctuary. In front are the singers, after them the musicians. With them are the maidens playing tambourines. Praise God in the great congregation. Praise the Lord in the assembly of Israel. There is the little tribe of Benjamin leading them. There the great throng of Judah's princes, and there the princes of Zebulun and Naphtali. Summon your power, O God. Show us your strength, O God, as you have done before. Because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings will bring you gifts. Rebuke the beast among the reeds, that herd of bulls among the calves of the nations. Humbled, it may bring bars of silver, scatter the nations who delight in war. Envoys will come from Egypt, Cush will submit herself to God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth, sing praise to the Lord, to him who rides the ancient skies above, who thunders with mighty voice. Proclaim the power of God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose power is in the skies. You are awesome, O God, in your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. Praise be to God. All right, so we just read eight psalms. And Psalm 1, uh, the very first psalm in the whole book of Psalms, defines a righteous man. It says that his eyes are on God and he will be sustained and upheld by that as long as he maintains it. But So it's kind of interesting. If you ever kind of want to look through the Bible as like a, if somebody ever asks you like, oh, what would a, what would that look like if somebody was, uh, living what they've read in the Bible, Psalm 1's not a bad place to start. It's kind of a, a cool uh, cool little synopsis of that. Psalm 2 is all about David as the new king. Um, it also kind of mentions in there that God laughs at nations who oppose Israel. And uh, an interesting fun fact about that is that the only time in all of Scripture that it mentions God as laughing is at his enemies, which is a, a very interesting um, tidbit there. And no other time is it ever described as God laughing other than times that he is laughing at his enemies. Uh, Psalm 15 then reminds us that we can never meet God's standards and how he has He shows us abound, abundant love and mercy because we're never going to live up to what he has set for us. So he basically has to, he basically has to come at us with love and mercy because that's the only way he'll be able to tolerate us. Um, Psalm 22 uh, shows that David it, it kind of is a lament of David, of his loneliness while following God. He reiterates that he'll follow him no matter what, but he is chased and persecuted, and that is, uh, you know, living in the world, that's a hard thing to uh, deal with. So he is lamenting to God that following him has caused him this earthly trouble, but also acknowledges that the earthly troubles we go through are nothing compared to the joy that we will get uh, following God in the long run. Psalm 23 is perhaps the most famous song. It includes the verse, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Um, one of the most common tattoos I've seen in the military, that's for sure. But um, anytime that you're uh, feeling a little bit down or not as brave as you need to feel like sometimes, Psalm 23 is a good one to go to. Psalm 24 is an acknowledgement of the ark of God coming to Jerusalem. It kind of just uh, explains how that the the kind of a a uh, a praise of that happening and psalm 47 is also celebrating the ark of god coming to jerusalem and it makes it clear that god is the god of the earth not just jerusalem 
Um, Psalm 68 kind of recaps the whole journey of the ark coming through the desert and into Jerusalem. And we're going to finish today off with Psalms 89, 96, 100, 101, 105, and 132. Psalm 89 of Ethan the Ezraite. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you established your faithfulness in heaven itself. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. I will establish your line forever and make your throne firm through all generations. The heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness too in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies above can compare with the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the heavenly beings? In the counsel of the holy ones, God is greatly feared. He is more awesome than all who surround him. O Lord God Almighty, who is like you? You are mighty, O Lord, and your faithfulness surrounds you. Your, you rule over the urging, surging sea. When its waves mount up, you still them. You crushed Rahab like one of the slain. With your strong arm, you scattered your enemies. The heavens are yours, and yours also the earth. You founded the world and all that is in it. You created the north and the south. Tabor and Hermon sing for joy at your name. Your arm is endued with your power. Your hand is strong, your right hand exalted. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. Blessed are those you have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence, O Lord. They rejoice in your name all day long. They exult in your righteousness. For you are their glory and strength, and by your favor you exalt our horn. Indeed, our shields belong to the Lord. Once you spoke in a vision... Or our king to the Holy One of Israel. Once you spoke in a vision to your faithful people, you said, I have bestowed strength on a warrior. I have exalted a young man from the, among the people. I have found David my servant. With my sacred oil I have anointed him. My hand will sustain him. Surely my arm will strengthen him. No enemy will subject him to tribute. No wicked man will oppress him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down his adversaries. My faithful love will be with, love will be with him, and through my name his horn will be exalted. I will set his hand over the sea, his right hand over the rivers. He will call out to me, You are my Father, my God, my, the Rock, my Savior. I will also appoint him my firstborn, the most exalted of the kings of the earth. I will maintain my love to him forever, and my covenant with him will never fail. I will establish his line forever, as his, his throne as long as the heavens endure. If his sons forsake my law and do not follow my statutes, if they violate my decrees and fail to keep my commands, I will punish their sin with the rod, their iniquity with flogging. But I will not take my love from him, nor will I ever betray my faithfulness. I will not violate my covenant or alter what my lips have uttered. Once for all, I have sworn my, by my holiness, and I will not lie to David, that his line will continue forever, and his throne endure before me like the sun." It will be established forever like the moon, the faithful witness in the sky. But you have rejected, you have spurned, you have been very angry with your anointed one. You have renounced the covenant with your servant and defiled his crown in the dust. You have broken through all his walls and reduced his strongholds to ruins. All who pass by have plundered him. He has become the scorn of his neighbors. You have exalted the right hand of his foes. You have made all his enemies rejoice. You have turned back the edge of his sword. You have not supported him in battle. You have, put not, you have put an end to his splendor and cast his throne to the ground. You have cut short the days of his youth. You have covered him sh with a mantle of shame. How long, O Lord, will you hide yourself forever? How long will your wrath burn like fire? Remember how fleeting is my life for what utility you have created all men. What man can live and not see death or save himself from the power of the grave? O Lord, where is your former great love in which your faithfulness you swore to David? Remember, Lord, how your servant has been mocked. How I bear in my heart the taunts of all the nations, the taunts with which your enemies have mocked, O Lord, with which they have mocked every step of your anointed one. Praise be to the Lord forever. Amen and amen. Psalm 96 Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. 
Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. They will sing before the Lord, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his truth. Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Psalm 101, a Psalm of David. I will sing of your love and justice to you, O Lord. I will sing praise. I will be careful to lead a blameless life. When will you come to me? I will walk in my house with blameless heart. I will set before my eyes no vile thing. The deeds of faithless men I hate. They will not cling to me. Men of perverse heart shall be far from me. I will have nothing to do with evil. Whoever slanders his neighbor in secret, him I will put to silence. Whoever has haughty eyes and a proud heart, him I will not endure. My eyes will be on the faithful in the land that they may dwell with me. He whose walk is blameless will minister to me. No one who practices deceit will dwell in my house. No one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. Every morning I will put to silence all the wicked in the land. I will cut off every evil doer from the city of the Lord. Psalm 105 Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in his strength, seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. O descendants of Abraham his servant, O sons of Jacob his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God, his judgments are all in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the word he commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac, he confirmed it with Jacob as a decree, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you I will give the land of Canaan as, as the portion you will inherit. There were few, but few. When they were few, excuse me. But when they, when they were but few in number, few indeed, and strangers in it, they wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another. He allowed no one to oppress them. For their sake, he rebuked kings. Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. He called down famine on the land and destroyed all their supplies of food. And he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. They bruised his feet with shackles. His neck was put in irons. Till what he foretold came to pass till the word of the Lord proved him true. The king sent and released him. The ruler of people set him free. He made him a master of his household, ruler over all he possessed, to instruct his princes as he pleased and teach his elders wisdom. Then Israel entered Egypt. Jacob lived as an alien in the land of Ham. The Lord has made his people very fruitful, and he made them too numerous for their foes, whose hearts he turned to hate his people, to conspire against his servants. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen, they performed his miraculous signs among them, his wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made the land of dark, for they had not, for had they not rebelled against his words? He turned their waters into blood, causing their fish to die. Their land teemed with frogs, which went up into the bedrooms of their rulers. He spoke, and there came swarms of flies and gnats throughout their country. He turned their rain into hail. With lightning throughout their land, he struck down their vines and fig trees, and shattered the trees of their country. He spoke, and locusts came, grasshoppers without number. They ate up every green thing in their land, ate up the produce of their soil. Then he struck down all the firstborn in their land, the first fruits of all their manhood. He brought out Israel laden with silver and gold, and from among their tribes no one faltered. Egypt was glad when they left, because dread of Israel had fallen on them. He spread out a cloud as a covering, and a fire to give light at night. They asked, and he brought them quail, and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock and water gushed out like a river it flowed in the desert. For he remembered his holy promise given to his servant Abraham. He brought out his people with rejoicing, his chosen ones with shouts of joy. He gave them the lands of the nations, and they fell heir to what others had toiled for, that they might keep his precepts and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. Psalm 132 O Lord, remember David and all the hardships he endured. He swore an oath to the Lord and made a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not enter my house or go to my bed. I will allow no sleep to my eyes, no slumber to my eyelids, till I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. We heard it in Ephrathah and came upon it in the fields of Jair. Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, and come to your resting place, you in the ark of your might. 
May your priests be clothed in, clothed in righteousness. May your saints sing for joy. For the sake of David, your servant, do not reject your anointed one. The Lord swore an oath to David, a sure oath that he will not revoke. One of your own descendants I will place on the throne. If your sons keep my covenant and the statutes I teach them, then their sons I will sit on your throne forever and ever. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling. This is my resting place forever and ever. Here I will sit enthroned, for I have desired it. I will bless her with abundant provisions. Her poor I will satisfy with food. I will clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints will ever sing for joy. Here I will make a horn grow for David, and set up a lamp for my anointed one. I will clothe his enemies with shame, but the crown on his head will be resplendent. So we wrapped up the day with six psalms there, and the first one was Psalm 89, written by Ethan. Um, it just kind of outlines that David is the firstborn of the kingly line of Israel. Um, obviously, you know, not the firstborn of, of uh, anything other than that significance-wise, not the firstborn person, not the firstborn of God, but the firstborn of the kingly line of Israel that God is establishing. It also looks as though later in the psalm, it kind of seems like Ethan is accusing God of forsaking Israel. But if this was written in a time when Israel was rife with sin and God was kind of letting some bad things happen to them, it probably did feel like they were being forsaken. But Ethan does kind of come back around to acknowledging that God has never abandoned Israel um, and unless never, he's, he's never not been there for Israel when they come back to him. So uh, then we move on to Psalm 96, and it just to kind of talks about how God is saying that all the gods of people are worthless idols. Um, Psalm 100 then celebrates that we belong to God. It describes us as being the sheep of his flock. 101, uh, David kind of outlines what kind of king he wants to be. He vows not to be in the presence of of people and things that are worthless or not glorifying God. Uh, Psalm 105 recounts the history of Israel again. You know, this is one of those things that we've really, really, it feels like to us that we have beaten this horse to death. But, you know, these are people that don't know all the time where they came from. They don't know the laws. Quite obviously, if they had taken the laws seriously and knew them by heart, then David wouldn't have uh, tried moving the ark in a foolish way. Uh, Psalm 132, the last one, it kind of recounts all the promises God has made to David and Israel, but it kind of, but then it also leaves out the warning that we saw earlier to David that uh, his, it, it says that David will, David's line will continue to be kings of Israel forever. But it does say earlier that we've read that unless his sons turn away from God, that will cause some problems. But 132 leaves out that warning. Um, and some speculation is that maybe during the time Psalm 132 was written, they were in exile or still fighting Saul. Um, things didn't look that great. So the blessing is there, but the the warning is not there. Maybe it would have kind of poured, you know, made a made a bad situation feel a little bit worse. But so some interesting stuff there. When we come back next week, we're going to be in 2 Samuel, 1 Chronicles, and Psalms again. We've got a few, a couple more weeks of kind of going back and forth between those three books. But continuing on with the story of David, thank you very much for being here today. I really appreciate you following along. Uh, if you haven't, uh, if you have, you're just jumping in with us, I would highly encourage you to jump back to the very beginning when we start with Genesis and read. We are reading the Bible chronologically, which is why we're kind of bouncing around a little bit where we are right now. But Appreciate you guys. Hopefully you have a great week and we will be back here next week with another episode of the Blue Creek Outdoors Bible Study. Catch you later.